Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie show, Living Heaven on Earth. And I'm with my co-host today, Tom Lombrezo. And Tom has written a book called The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. And we're here to talk to you today about practical tools and tips on how to uh, live in peace. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thanks, Cornelia. It's great to be here again. Yes. And, you know, you and I have both written books on peace. I I wrote a book called Peace, the Flip Side to Anger. And originally when I wrote that book, uh, the, the, the title was called Peace is an Inside Job. And I ran into a friend of mine at the post office because I was talking about... Um, how I was really focusing on anger because when I, when I, the reason why I wrote my book is when I was communicating with source, I was asking what is, what is, what is it that causes war on this planet? What is it that, how is it that we can shift that? And so I was writing a book about how to, um, how to release the emotion of anger and, and assist people, myself included, because again, peace is an inside job, to assist with um, releasing our, our own inner war, our own inner conflict that we have, and, um, and, and release that energy because we know that uh, you can't be angry and be at peace at the same time. And so that's what we're here to talk today about. Uh, Tom, is um, how to live in inner peace. And so I'm curious as to how did you get the title of your book, The Magic of Finding Joy and Peace, Love and Peace? How did you get that title? Well, it was a conversation between my wife and myself, Caroline, and um, we were trying to figure out the title. (laughs) And uh, we both believe our lives are filled with magic. Um, and I think all of us have that potential. Living here on Earth is magic. Mm-hmm. And so that's how magic got in there. And um, um, we ha- have experienced so many things about love that that's how that got in there. So we were thinking, well, the magic of love, but you have to have peace because that's that's the spiritual experience is peace. If you haven't discovered that, you're not quite there. And so um, I don't see how a spiritual being can live in a state of war or strife. It has to be peace within itself. So we had experienced many, many things about peace. Um, but at that moment, that word just came in and just fit the title just perfectly. Yeah, because like you said, if you're um, having a spiritual experience, you can't really have a spiritual experience without peace, right? I mean, really, truly live, live peace. And and right now at, at this time on the planet, it's uh, we're bringing, uh, ushering in the, the peace on earth uh, evolutionary cycle where this is the first time ever in the history of the 26,000 year cycle that we have been here, that we are uh, bringing peace in. One heart, one soul at a time, and it begins with each and every one of us. And so you have a peace practice, and uh, what, um, what are your thoughts around how does one move into inner peace, and what is it that, that, uh, that people can do? I'd, I'd love to 
I'd love to hear your take on all of that. I think the main thing is you have to sit down with yourself and really analyze yourself. Um, it could take just five minutes, frankly, I think. Um, but spend a little time with yourself to uh, digest. How do you live each day? What are your thoughts each day? What are your problems? What do you have concerns about? What do you like? That kind of thing. And I think once you analyze yourself, for example, um, I did myself, I commuted to work, you know, of almost an hour each way for many years. That is not a peaceful experience. So, you know, one of the things you might analyze is why am I doing that? Mm. Can I do something different? Uh, can I find a job closer to home? Can I work at home? I mean, all these other things. When you analyze different parts of a way you live, um, you can you can make changes. Now, I think when you when you look at the issue of your life and negativity, mm -hmm. what negativity is such a terrible thing for the individual, um, and uh, you're living. You're having aspects brought into your life of negative energies. Um, and that, um, you cannot live a life of peace with that negative energy in you. It might be uh, a family member or a friend that's just rubbing you in the wrong way. Or um, your boss. Or you're having negative thoughts. Uh, that kind of thing. You have to analyze it and say, should I be doing that? Can I change myself into these matters? There's so many things that you can think about that uh, you're doing versus what you could be doing in a different way, simply by choice. Because every day we wake up and we make choices, what we do, how we have breakfast, what we're going to wear, what we're going to do at work, what we're going to do when we get home, how we're going to take care of the family, blah, 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 you know, all those things. So um, there are different ways to live. And um, we have been leaving, living a really great uh, life of peace since 2012, when uh, we experienced some very great positive energies. And it really ushered in a new period of time for us that negative things did not work for us any longer. We could not go to places that were negative feelings for us. We couldn't um, see friends that really weren't so much friends, they were negative influences, that kind of thing. And so we made changes and some of them were not pretty. You know, they were not easy to make, but we are in such a better place now. And to live within yourself, have that sense of peace, sense of uh, gratitude and love, and all of those things, um, that is the best feeling. And so it all can be done. I'm not anybody special, everybody can do this. It's about choice. It is about choice. You know, um, you, you touched on it when you were talking about having to make choices in your life, you know, maybe to release toxic relationships or people that are, have, you know, have negative energy, um, you know, and you have to be willing and you have to be uh, courageous enough to um, choose peace and and choose um, choose a life of peace. Because, you know, I, I remember there was a time when I was, uh, I was in drama and there was a lot of drama. And it's like, you know, like when you're a drama queen or you're, you're drama and you're continuously looking for drama. And you, I used to think that peace was boring, actually. Okay, if I'm in peace, then everything is boring. There's no, there's no, really no drama. But when you think about it, um, being in peace, that's one of the highest vibrations that the physical body can be in because that's the place where true healing begins because you're so at peace. Your physical body is so at peace. It's so open. It's so receptive. And, you know, it's like when you're walking into a room and uh, the room is tranquil and the energy is tranquil, and you can really feel the vibration of peace. Your physical body is relaxed, is absolutely relaxed. And that, that is the state that we want to be in all the time. 
we want to bring ourselves into that type of a vibration of relaxation where um, where healing can happen, right? Wouldn't you agree with that, Tom? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, the, again, it gets back to choice. And these choices are not easy sometimes because we're, um, we're trained, we're brought up to believe certain things, to live certain ways. Yeah. And um, we're born into a family. We're born into uh, an extended family. We're born into where we live and perhaps how we live. And it takes some effort to analyze, is this the way to live? And maybe we're born into a great situation. That's great. But maybe you weren't. And maybe you need to make a choice. There are so many instances you can actually read about virtually in every day in the paper or here on the news about um, people that got into a conflict, mm. and sometimes ending in death, but a conflict, and that most of those conflicts did not have to be, but they came to be because those people, perhaps two people or more, continued to be together. They, they associated together or whatever, and perhaps one of them said, this is not good, but I don't know any other way. And so... Mm. Um, it does take courage. It does take um, some thought that what is it that's making me feel bad? That why can't I change it? Um, and people obviously uh, are um, unaccustomed to change many times, and change is difficult. It can be difficult, but the rewards are tremendous once you make it. So um, we've done this. We've gone through that. We've had family members that were not good for us. They're, they're gone. We removed them. Friends that were not good for us. You know, friends that talk behind your back, that kind of thing. Yeah, that don't have your best interests at heart. No, yeah. they have their interests at heart. And that's yeah, that are <laughs> friends that are not choosing peace for themselves. But anyway, yeah. we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. And when we come back, Tom, we're going to tell everybody how to get your amazing book because five uh, lucky callers are going to get your book for free or five people that will email you. We'll, we'll be right back. We'll take a quick break and be right back with Tom Lombrezo. Hi, I'm Tom Lombrezo, and I'm here to tell you of my latest book, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. What's it all about? Well, can you imagine you're driving home, Michael, like I did 17 years ago in my Jeep when an angel comes into my Jeep and tells me what to do. I did it, and it saved my life because a terrible accident ensued seconds later. My life changed dramatically since that day, full of spiritual experiences. I have documented those spiritual experiences in this book so that you can relive them yourself. Perhaps you're going through your own spiritual transformation. If there's any doubt in your mind that there are angels, or messages you might get from clouds, or that you are a spiritual being as well as a human being, you must buy this book. This book is full of photographs, 375 color photographs, over 278 pages. Of those, 155 uh, photographs are of clouds, clouds that will knock your socks off. So, how do you buy this book? Well, go to my website, www.whenangelstouch.com, whenangelstouch.com, and on the home page, you'll see the, the photograph of the book, and it just says, buy it. So please buy it. It's $25. It's a good bargain for what you're getting. And if you need to contact me by email, tom at whenangelstouch.com, and you can see me on Facebook every day at When Angels Touch Facebook. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and I'm talking with Tom Lombrezo. We're talking about peace. And Tom and his wife, Caroline, wrote a book called The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. And the first five callers, the first five emailers that will email Tom can receive a free copy of Tom's book at tom at whenangelstouch.com. And in the subject line, write... Uh, free book and Tom's also going to include uh, 
a, a, a photo that he took of the divine feminine and there's an inscription that he is going to read to us and tell us what the inscription says Tom okay it's beautiful well th let's describe the photo a little bit it's on a cloudy day and it's overhead and I don't know I don't know what it is I take it and the computer when I downloaded it had this beautiful female figure long legs and arms head everything um, just incredible and what comes into your mind when you see it is it's such it's so divine and it's mm -hmm. special and it's feminine so it's the divine feminine and we know the divine feminine energies are coming into our planet so the inscription on the back would be behold the divine feminine within and around you honor the love that she brings to you in reading this message she blesses you infinitely with her love. Feel, receive, integrate this love deeply into your body. Live in peace within yourself and spread that peace throughout the world. Beautiful. And that's what we're doing with today's show. We're spreading the peace uh, throughout the world and we're inspiring others to live peace and be at peace. And one of the things you and I were talking about during break, uh, Tom, is how can people live in peace in the state of the world, the way that the world is today? Well, let's talk about the state of the world. And um, I think most of us know it. We see it on TV. We read it in the papers. It's everywhere. We're born into it. We were raised into it. And it never ceases. But we have wars constantly. We've had... Even right today, we have the Iraqi war, we have the Afghanistan war, we have the Syrian war, which is absolutely horrendous. Uh, 500,000 plus people have been killed of their own, by their own leader, and millions have had to leave their country into other countries. It's caused chaos in their country, but also in neighboring countries. So that's a terrible one, obviously. Somalia is a, a war. There's several wars going on in Africa and the Boko Haram and all those things. Such violence, death, um, wars in uh, the Far East as well. So um, South America, they're all over. And then there's minor conflicts that go on uh, constantly. So when you think about it, we don't know. We don't know what peace is like. We don't have a TV that can say in the news, we had another glorious day of peace today. <laughs> we, you know, and all that that means. And what it means is, what can you imagine a world where we're all creating things without war? We're creating love and peace and harmony on the planet perhaps uh, helping our animal neighbors neighbors uh, and friends, um, our whole world made up of insects and other things that play all a part in why we're here. So, um, so much to accomplish. And of course, um, our connection with the, the divine, with the angels and so forth, all that we could be spending energy doing such positive things helping each other. I mean, Lord knows you've got so many people on this planet that need help. And then we have a lot of people that have wealth and have time to do it. And there's, there's a lot of wonderful people on our planet and give of themselves. But we still have a lot to do. And we have this background of constant conflict and war. It's really hard to think about it. I mean, think about the financial resources that have gone in from our country into the Iraqi and Afghanistan war, um, billions and billions and billions of dollars that could have been, you know, here, helping people here or helping people across the world. So um, when you think about where we live every day and how we're bombarded by news of conflicts and war, not to mention the conflicts in our own country with um, and you get it, particularly if you have an iPhone or iPad or something like that. And you get the recent news is, you know, uh, shooting in a school or uh, a couple, a family shot each other. My goodness, such conflict. Um, if we could eliminate that or even reduce it significantly, 
would be such a bonus for us as a human race. So that's the setting that we live in. Can we change that, that thing that we were born into? Can we do something different on a major scale? And it all begins, in my point of view, and perhaps yours, uh, Cornelia, it starts with the individual. Absolutely. You know, we, um, we can do a lot, and people have done a lot uh, in terms of protesting wars and so forth, and we gather together collectively. But I don't think it can have a, a lasting peace here unless we all are thinking and acting in a peaceful way. Well, there's many of us, you know, like like you're practicing peace. There's many people that are peace advocates that um, that are doing um, incredible things on the planet, like you said, and that are ushering in that peace cycle. I mean, that's what we came. You know, Gaia is moving into Mother Earth is moving to a higher vibrational way of living and being, and this planet is um, complete with war. Uh, it, this this is just not part of our evolution where we're going. It's part of uh, an old cycle that's dying away um, where we're harming each other and hurting each other. And part of the reason why I wrote my book, Tom, is because I, I talk about emotion. Is that's the thing that I do is I, I help people balance and um, heal their emotional um, core wounding. And um, when people um, get educated on that people act on their emotions, if there's a school shooting or if there is somebody that, that is starting a violent act, it's always an act on an emotion. And when we can educate and create awareness around uh, this emotional um, act that, that people are doing is to release the emotion and not act upon it. So don't don't harm another. I mean, that's a universal uh, truth and a universal law of the new earth is do no harm onto yourself and do no harm onto others. And that's living in our integrity. And this is, this is part of living in peace and being in peace is taking that type of action. So even when you have a negative emotion and you harm yourself or do something to yourself, um, this is this is not okay. It's not part of our um, evolutionary awakening in today's in today's world. And we're we're calling we're calling us to wake up and to take responsibility and live in integrity. Choose peace. Practice peace. Learn about what triggers us. Release the triggers. And you, you mentioned it earlier, is, is doing kind things for yourself, doing kind things for, for others, doing kind things for animals. So there's, there's so many ways, but it begins with each and every one of us, right? Because if every person, like you said earlier, chose peace, it's, it's, it's making that choice. You made the choice by writing your book. Um, and your book is incredible. It's a very high vibrational book that has um, captured, images captured um, of yours and Caroline's journey that um, talks about your spiritual journey. And if people are not believers in peace and angels and magic, they really should get your book because it has it all captured and you will become a believer. So Tom, would you tell people where to get your book? Okay, well, um you can um, email me at tom at oneangelstouch.com and uh, ask for a free book. And please include your mailing address because I can't send it to you otherwise. And uh, I also pay for the postage. Now, after the free books are gone, you can go to my website, www.whenangelstouch.com. And on the home page, you will see the book and you will see buy now and that you can purchase it for $25 off my website. So very easy. Yes. And then they can also follow you on Facebook because you have quite uh, an amazing Facebook page where you post angel and cloud cover cloud photos at when angels touch.com Facebook, Facebook right. when angels right. touch .com. And then you also have some artwork that's for sale at your website 
uh, at whenangelstouch.com, artwork, and you have it all listed there, yeah. and prices. You want to yeah. tell us a little bit about your artwork, Tom? Well, I never thought I'd be a painter or an artist, but in 2007, I started painting all of a sudden when an energy came into my body and basically told me to paint. So strange, so strange. And um, and I didn't know what to do, except go ahead and buy the stuff and work at it. And um, uh, I think it's uh, divinely created because many times my hand is going where I'm not thinking and uh, it's being created. And perhaps an angel is holding my hand. I don't know, but it's um, it, it, things get created and there many things are beautiful. And um, most of my art is abstract. But it carries a lot of energy. And so if you have it in your home, you're carrying that energy into your home. So um, I hope that uh, people embrace it and you can see it um, on my website. Wonderful. We're going to take another break. We'll be right back with Tom Lombrezzo and we'll be right back. Stephanie show living heaven on earth and Tom and I are talking about peace today how to uh, live in peace in the midst of all the turmoil and the changes and the evolutionary changes and the war and everything that's going on outside we're offering you tools and techniques and practices on how it is that you can live your life uh, living in peace first and foremost by choosing peace to begin with. It, it comes down to uh, making that choice of, I want to live my life in peace, and then uh, maybe making necessary changes in your life that um, are not at peace. And so that's what you're saying, Tom, is to sit down and, and, and have a dialogue with yourself and find out exactly what's going on and where you're at, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I might add. Um, I think most of us have been taught that our brains are the most important thing. That's where our intelligence is and creativity and so forth. And um, that's true. But um, our hearts are not revered as much, I don't think, on a broad scale of humanity. And that really, um, the heart is really our center it is our power. It, in a way, it is our mind. Now, I'll give you an example. I know, and I'm sure everybody has gone through this, where uh, you might be arguing with somebody. And the argument may elevate to a point where um, you start swearing some of the nastiest words there are. And um, once you do that, you pretty much cross the line. Because when the other person hears those words, um, they're not going to forget them ever coming out of your mouth. You know, it's like, who? this is who you are. You're saying those things to that other person, and they may be very insulting and so forth. So, um, particularly in today's society, it, we freely use these words. Well, my view is that's the brain working. Mm -hmm. The brain uses those words. Mm -hmm. The heart would never use them to cause that's such pain. Mm -hmm. And that's where the heart is so much more special. It is The heart is so much more intelligent that it knows not to abuse someone else this way. There are other ways, obviously, the heart would know to resolve a conflict. The brain may not know that. So um, I know, uh, you know, I've been in arguments before with people and I know um, how I feel if I were to go too far. It, yeah, and how it would affect that person. Even if I hate that other person, I shouldn't be saying these things to them. It's not yeah. a right thing to do, um, particularly if you're looking at the long-term relationships of, with somebody. Those those um, drastic actions and words uh, are something that will stick with someone that it's uh, given to. So well, yeah. I really believe the heart, if you can put yourself into your heart, 
and embellish your heart and start to think about what your heart would do in a situation. It wouldn't do these things. A heart would not go to war. A heart would not have these it kill somebody. In other words, the heart would not do that. It is so painful for the heart. That's speaking part for the of, heart. <laughs> speaking for the heart, that's part of the, the divine feminine energies that are that are coming in. Um, because the divine feminine energy is is not about war. It's not about conflict. That that was all part of the old patriarchal uh, environment that we are leaving behind, and giving birth to the new era. And part of you know what you're talking about with the brain is that you know that's when 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 we're doing harm or causing harm, whether that's verbal violence, you know, verbal communication, whether that's hurting someone. Um, you know, whatever way, it's general from a bruised ego, and the ego is hurt, and we know that um, that's not the big picture, and that's also not the higher mind, and it's not the mind of God. The higher mind, uh, your higher self, um, like you said, that's not what spirit would do. It's not what the heart would do, is um, you're coming at it from a wounded place, and this is the reason why I'm saying learn how to um, process your emotions. What is this about for me? Why do I feel triggered? What is this relationship mirroring to me? What is this showing to me right now? What is this about for me? What am I releasing and letting go of? Because every time when we get into any kind of argument or anything with somebody and you get triggered, there's always an opportunity to release something old, something suppressed from the past out of your physical body, release that energy and let that go. Um, through the dialogue. What is this about? Because again, it's an emotion. It's an emotion. And people act on their emotions, which is why I wrote my book, Peace, the Flip Side to Anger. You can get that book on Amazon. And um, there's a, I'm also, I want to give people uh, tools. You can email me at radio at corneliastephanie.com and I will send you for free my 21 day peace practice because it does take practice when you say Tom to live in peace it takes a daily practice sometimes a moment to moment and when we make peace our choice and sit down with ourselves every single day to let peace be the path peace be the way bring yourself into into peace and that it starts with you right absolutely absolutely and and the thing is that we're not taught to be in a peaceful state. And that's kind of what I'm talking about today is that we're ingrained with war and peace and conflict. Um, you know, perhaps you are born into a, a larger family that there's constant conflict. And you have to see and live that um, uh, conflict. And what do you bring from that? What are you thinking about? How do you grow up with that? Um, so many families have that background, and how do they turn themselves around is the, is the thing. And I think that's what we're talking about, is that information needs to get out to people. It's a, a new way of thinking, a new way of actually living each day. And I, I think some people might think, well, peace is kind of a silly thing to talk about. But it's not. It's really the better thing to talk about, much better to talk about than you know hurting somebody or going to war terrible things and so um peace living in peace with each other in a community in a city in a town yeah i mean can you imagine it peace is the highest vibration that each that we can live in living in peace like i said earlier when we live in peace our physical body is at ease and is relaxed so healing can happen it's a place where when we're living in peace, um, the solutions to our problems become um, like magic. When we're living in peace, uh, we, we are creative. There's, there's, uh, there's a flow that's going on. 
and there's there's a way where we can express our loves our love to each other um, when we're in peace, and it's a vibrational frequency that that just brings about a harmony where everyone can relax and feel good. You know what it feels like when you are emitting a frequency of peace, and you're um, around someone naturally people will either stay in that vibration with you where they're where they're wanting to get on on your wavelength but if they're in conflict they may not be able to handle it and they will leave simply because you know the the vibration of peace is just not a vibration that they can hold so that's another way is you bringing the peace and being the peace bringer yourself and that's what this planet is calling for, for all of us to take responsibility and make peace our action, make peace our, our way of living. And, you know, we're all being called. We're all being called to do that. And it's like you said, um, it, it, it's a choice. Well, absolutely. And, and, you know, every day we have to make these choices, what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, you might be working for a boss that you don't like and is bullying you or your friends are bullying you or saying nasty things. Um, or, um, of course, we all grow up like in high school and beyond living in, um, might say, cliques of people. Mm -hmm. and some cliques are OK and some cliques aren't so OK. And and uh, if you're going to and that's the choice, are you going to follow? A group of people that is, and that the key word is follow, rather than lead. You know, are you going to follow just because you want to be friends with somebody, or are you going to lead by making your own determination you want to be with that group or not? Yeah, you can get Tom's book at the first five emailers will get Tom's book at uh, Tom at WhenAngelsTouch.com, and in the subject line write free book and you can also he wants you to make sure to put your address so that um that he knows where to send it to and um he's also including uh postage uh to mail it to you so it's the first five people that email tom at whenangelstouch.com also go to tom's web website at whenangelstouch.com and his facebook page there's lots of high vibrational uh, messages and photos and clouds and uh, the way that Tom sees the world through the eyes of an angel. It's always wonderful speaking with you. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace, was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now, and even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life, I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth. After working with her for many years, I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach, uh, coaching program, and it has absolutely been an amazing process. I now am a certified empowerment coach, and I got certified through her program, and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt 
and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We're talking about peace, and peace begins with me, aloha begins with me, love begins with me, and that's what we're talking about today, Tom, peace being an inside job. And we want to leave our audience today with practical tools and tips on what it is that uh, we can do every single day to take us into inner peace. Well, we could have a whole day talking about this, but um, I wanted to tell a short story. Um, when I was uh, at work um, uh, one day, um, a man came in, very tall man compared to me, and uh, over the counter, I was supposed to help him with something, and he was just shouting and so angry. He felt that, um, I worked for a government, he felt that the government had hurt him in some way mm. and gave him a bad rap of something, and, and so um, I just let him shout. And I then said, when you're done shouting, then we can talk and I can help you. Mm -hmm. He he shut up immediately. Mm -hmm. Someone had to tell him that shouting at me is not going to resolve the problem. Right. You know, let's talk about what the problem is, and then I can help you. And once that was done, and I helped him, he was happy. Right. And so I think we're um, taught, you know, that maybe we would be better off if we shouted someone down or pushed them around and so forth. It's not true. Um, and so there are ways to um, change a situation into a peaceful one. Mm -hmm. And um, and so to de disarm the person that is violent or, uh, you know, shouting or whatever it might be, that's a good example. But there are so many more things. Um, you know, uh, all of us tend to carry some negative thoughts. We need to remove them, you know, as best we can. Uh, there's no need for the negativity in our mind. Uh, try to have positive thoughts each day. Um, also remove yourself from negative people and situations. And um, uh, uh, I know at some point uh, my wife and I felt really bad about walking into a couple of restaurants and bars we used to go to and we don't like it anymore. And we just said, no, nope, we're not going to go there. There's uh, negativity and you can feel it. I mean, I think we're all we're all angels in a way and that we have powers to feel and see Absolutely. when yeah. we're when we're in a negative situation or we're going to go into one, you know, go with your gut and say, yeah. that's what we did. OK, don't go in there anymore. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. And there are a lot of people are around us that would love to take advantage of us, maybe more today than ever. And so you have to be uh, keep your wits about you and um, uh, and deal with people that are more positive for you. Don't be taken advantage of. There's no need to, to do it. Um, then um, you know our lives are filled with noise. So much noise, TVs, radios, um, you name it. There's so much noise around us, cars, freeways. Silence is the antidote to the noise. <laughs> you know, and, Tom, what's really funny about this is that um, I'm, I'm in Kauai right now. And one of the things I have found is how noisy it is. Because um, there's just, you know, there's just a lot, there's just a lot of noise all around. And 
all the places that I've been. And so, as a matter of fact, last week, I was saying, my goodness, I would just love to find a hot air balloon somewhere mm -hmm. and go in a hot air balloon because, you know, going into a hot air balloon is probably one of the most silent things that you can do. I don't know if you've ever been in one, but going in a hot air balloon, um, it's, it's really super silent, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And um, because there is a, there's a chicken, chickens gone wild here in, in Kauai. There's chickens everywhere. There's chickens and roosters. So I think it was back in the late 90s or late 80s, something like that, is when there was a hurricane here and the chicken coop broke. And so then the chickens um, got gone wild, got wild. And now there's as many chickens as there are humans. And they're everywhere. They're just everywhere. And so they're constantly do it, making their chicken noise and the roosters. And it's like, oh, my gosh. So very noisy. So, yeah, I have been challenged to find my silence. <laughs> yes. Well, it is a challenge in our world. I also want to talk about gratitude. Oh, I love and, gratitude. And, um, of course, we can meditate to get closer to ourselves. But if we can put ourselves in a state of gratitude, and what I mean by that, because we're so busy in our lives, uh, work and family and such, that if you could take even just five minutes a day and go to a place in your house or yard or somewhere and just sit or walk and realize the abundance of so much great things from the birds and the bees and the, and the flowers and the trees. There's a song, right? Yeah. And, um, there's, there's so much goodness around mm -hmm. us if we were to take it in. Mm -hmm. But we're kind of prevented from taking it in because we're so busy. So you do have to force yourself to do this. And it's healthy to do it each day if you can. And to just realize it as a, as a way of gratitude for your existence here. Because even if we have some bad things happening to us, um, we can get a little bit of goodness out of um, our planet and our surroundings and realize we um, we are we're angels here, right? We're angels here, and we can um, realize the goodness that we've been placed into. So uh, it's very healthy to do this, to be thankful for what we have, and each of us can be thankful. Frankly, I think people with a lot of money are are at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. and I, I've worked with a lot of people with a lot of money they like to make more money. Yeah. And yet they're not as privileged as I am to be able to walk through a path of trees and shrubs and and wildlife. They don't have time to embrace it because they're going after money. Yeah. Um, and so there are so many ways to talk about how grateful you can be for your existence. It's not about making money. It really isn't. Yeah, we have to have some to survive, but we don't have to embellish ourselves into it in such a way. So um, those are some of the things. There's many, many more. Yeah, and I love I love what you said about you know raising your vibration and gratitude is an is an amazing um, place where we can practice peace. Is raising our vibration, bringing mm -hmm. in, well, even like you said, even with the challenges, we can find the blessing in the challenges and we can bless our lives instead of cursing our lives we can bless each other instead of um fighting each other we can bless our finances we can bless our relationships we can bless our health we can bless our work mm -hmm. we, can, uh, we can feel grateful because again when we when we're when we're expressing gratitude it's a high vibration and right away you can shift your paradigm and you can shift your um, reality. And I think that's actually a top uh, peace, peace tool is to practice gratitude. And so I really appreciate you writing your book, Tom. Let's tell everybody again where they can get it. Uh, they can go to, they can send you an email at tom at whenangelstouch.com and they can request their free copy of your book, uh, the, the Magic of Love and Peace, 
for the first five callers. And in the subject line, write free book, include your address, and Tom will be happy to pay for the postage. You can go to Tom's Facebook page at whenangelstouch.com. And you can also um, take a look at his amazing website at whenangelstouch.com. He's got incredible artwork there. I thank you so much, Tom, for spending this hour with us and inspiring us to um, find ways to live in peace by just um, simple, practical tools that we can do each and every day to um, raise our vibration and to bless our lives, to bring peace into our physical bodies, into our existence for the time that we're here. And it's part of our it's part of our responsibility as stewards of this land to to bring peace now, isn't it? And we're all capable and able to do it. You said it many times, and that is to choose. Choose peace. Yes, choose peace. Use your heart, choose peace. Thank you so much, Tom, and we'll see you again next time and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Namaste. Namaste. Take care.